we're going to look at histograms now. And in histogram, it keeps track of how many times certain values appear. Uh, if we just want to know how many values we have overall, we can use length, and we've used that quite a bit before. Uh, but now we want to look at certain values between uh, a range. And I already copied the in range there. Uh, one thing I did is I changed the, uh, the random array size to only go to 30, because I don't want to get too crazy. Uh, and I need to check and make sure this code actually runs, and I can't check a thousand or ten thousand things. That's not reasonable. All right, so what is this going to do? It's going to start a counter at zero, and it's going to do the standard for loop, loop, looping over the entire array. So what does this say? It says if our value at the index is greater than low and less than high, mathem mathematically, I don't like the order this is written in. I'm going to change the order like this. Uh, you can decide if there's equal signs or not equal signs. It's up to you. And this says if it's greater than low and less than high, you add one to the count, and at the end you're going to return the count. Okay, so let's... I don't think we need this array A anymore. Let's clean this up. We're starting to get a little... Too much stuff here. Clear all this stuff out. Okay. So we're going to make a random array, and then I want to run the in range method. And then we're going to print out, uh, let's do an int count equals in range and the our random array made scores well not scores made numbers between uh, 0 and 100 let's go to 101 so it'll really be 0 to 100 uh, so these will this, these are like scores in a class you can score anywhere from 0 to 100 percent so we made a random array and the values will be between 0 and 100 and then we're going to go in range, and just looking at the order right here, the first thing is an integer array. So our integer array is called R. We'll call it scores. And of course, you better call it scores everywhere it appears. All right, now we need a low and a high. So let's go 50, 70. That's good. Let's do a print F. There are percent D for a number between another number and another number counts comma 50 comma 70. And let's run this. Oh, that's too many to count. There we go. And I would like a new line at the end of this as well. All right, so there it says there are three scores between 50 and 70. This is why I didn't want 10,000 numbers on the screen right here. All right, 50 and 70. So there's one, two, nope, two, three. There's three, and that is correct. 50 between, three scores between 50 and 70. Oh, so many numbers. All right, let's get a variable int low equals 30, int high equals 90. So there'll be a lot of scores between these, low comma high. So I'm not gonna count them all by hand, but that looks believable. There's 11 scores here between 30 and 90. Uh, one way you can do this checking faster if you trim back. This is our random array maker. We can trim it back to uh, maybe 10. Now we can hand count them much faster. Uh, between 30 and 90, there's only two scores that didn't make it, so there's three that did. We can run it again. 
Uh, this random way, uh, random generation is a very good way to test your methods because you can keep regenerating these and see if it's actually correct. Two scores between 30 and 90. One, two. So those are not between 30 and 90, so those are. All right, so that is, where did we go? In range. All right, so now our code's starting to get cluttered. You can close up these methods once they're working well. And this will let you navigate things quite a bit better. Uh, remember, we still have that search method right here. Uh, let's go ahead. We'll make this random array, make one uh, really big. And I'm going to test our search again now that we have a random array. So now, so I don't want this count anymore. Somewhere we had, let's search for uh, scores of exactly 90. Uh, I realize we don't have a method that does what I want. I want to count the scores. We don't need to print scores. I'm trying to do too much too quick. Let's out two string scores. So we'll see what scores are, and then we'll search for a value and then get a count. All right, so this method doesn't exist. Uh, I want to count. One thing you can do is you can create a method. Now, how in the world does NetBeans know to create a method? Well, you basically told it the name, which is underlined in red, and you told it it's going to be an int, uh, scores is an integer array and values an int. So if I create method, I'm going to have to go scroll down. Here we go. There's our new method. I'm going to put a default line of code, which if you call it, will throw an exception, which is fun to see because it's red. Uh, there we go. Unsupported operation exception, which is exactly that line of code. Don't worry about that right now. I want to count only when, e when things equal the value. So it's super similar to sum. So I'm going to close sum back up. Probably easier to t call this array so everything matches in here. All right. We're going to add one to total, but only if a condition is met. If array i equals value, then we're going to add one to total. This is going to count how many times that value occurs. So it takes array and a value, starts the total at zero, it's going to increment it every time the array equals the value. So there's where we call that line of code. And again, if I scroll out, you can see that it's going to call that count method. And let's give this a run. There are 90 scores equal to one. That's not. Ah, all right, so the order matters here. The first one is uh, the count, and the second one is the value. So I'm just gonna take count, you can highlight it, you can actually drag it, uh, count, comma, value. There are six scores equal to 90. Am I gonna count up here all six? No, but I believe it. Uh, to test this, maybe we uh, shrink that array back down, the random array. Uh, there's no scores equal to 90. That's correct. Uh, we might be here for a while. Maybe I'll change the size 100 array. There we go. We finally got some. All right. 
you can look for, I don't know why I'm printing it twice, but apparently there's two 90s in here. You can find them if you're so inclined. It looks like there's one broken across two lines there, and somewhere there's got to be a second one. Because my code's always infallible. Hmm. Oh, there it is. Boom, there's our second 90. All right. So that's fun with uh, counting.